Hey everybody, welcome to eTrailer.com. I'm Bobby, and today we're taking a look at the Kuat Sherpa 2.0 two-bike platform on our 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. Now this can be a very stylish, simplistic way of getting our lightweight bikes up onto our car and to the trailhead with us wherever we want to go. As you can see, we do have a tire hold system here. So if you're looking a way of getting your carbon frame bikes up to the trailhead with you, this is gonna be an excellent option as we don't have any frame contact. Now with that as well, we won't have any issues with those women bikes, step through bikes, or even those kiddo bikes getting up on here as we don't have to worry about that horizontal frame. Not gonna have to worry about a bike adapter bar. So those are pretty obvious solutions over those hanging styles you might see out there. Now right away, we can get 40 pounds of bike up on here per set. So with a 40 pound weight capacity, we are gonna get most of our standard and mountain bikes up on here. However, that does eliminate some of our heavier bikes like those e-bikes and for sure those fat tire bikes are gonna start getting a little bit too weighty for this guy. So this is primarily gonna be for those bicyclists who, you know, are just kind of casual and is really starting to get into your standard mountain bikes and bikes. Take a look at the platform itself. You can see we've got a lot of cool designs on it too. I always love the little um, kind of speckle orange that they have in here. It looks really good, almost kind of a copper look to it. It holds up really well with this metallic gray on here as well. As you can see, very, very stylish as we mentioned. At the end here too, we do have a simple ratchet stretch system that'll actually hold in the back tires. On the back end here too, we do have just a little bit of rubber matting here. That's gonna be doing a good job of, not, of getting this around our wheel rims, not causing any damage as we tighten down, not gonna have any friction or you know roughage on those wheel rims so always nice to see that getting a little protection as always and on the cradle itself it is oscillating it is going to rotate just a little bit for us as you can see we do have that inner groove for those standard tires that outer groove for some of our mountain bikes and some of our wider tires as well and with a three inch base here as well we aren't probably gonna be able to fit those fat tire bikes on here very well so definitely keep that in mind this is going to be more for our smaller guys here but it's going to do a great job of ratcheting down that lever extremely easy to pop over and start walking it out when you get our bike off. So, and then here too, you can see we do have a integrated cable lock as well. However, I should say cable locking core. Our cable actually comes unattached, but we can go through both of our bikes into here and lock that. So extremely nice that we actually have a locking capability. I do like how it's kind of in the middle too. A lot of times you start seeing them on the side and that can be great, but this way we actually get both of our bikes through one cable. So I do really like that. The end of this arm too is a ratcheting arm system. Very, very easy to use. I really like this system as well in the end here. We don't have any kind of like clanking going on all the time. You can see we have a little, little natural resistance on it as well. And when we actually want to bring this down onto our tire, you can see it's gonna do a good job of holding that in. Here I am pulling it up. Not gonna be letting that tire out. So when we are bumping on the road, we're not gonna have any worries about this popping over and letting our bike go. The lever is extremely easy to use too. It's just right here on the end and you push it in, walk it up or down as needed. Let me go ahead and get that to the side like so. Now in the end here too, we do have our front wheel cradle. You can see, kind of easily collapsible, which is nice just to give us a little bit more, you know, uh, storage capability, makes it look way nicer. You can see we actually do have some grooves in here as well. The standard, again, fitting quite nicely in those, getting a little bit wider for those mountain bikes and stuff. Now this isn't my favorite cradle. I think it's a little busy for what it is. And these grooves kind of can maybe get in the way, but if our bikes fit in those quite nicely, it's gonna be a great system for us. So. I do like how that actually collapses down. So that's kind of what you're paying for when you get that little system like so. Well, let's go ahead and see a couple features of this guy too. Now we are in the Outlander. We do have a little bit of cargo space we would definitely want to be able to access. And on this lever as well here, we just want to go ahead and pop this guy like so. And go ahead and walk that down. And now with 40 pound bikes on here, I don't think it's gonna be crazy heavy but definitely want to be make sure we're getting underneath that mass. That way we're not dropping 80 pounds on a rack, causing any damage. It's definitely gonna be nice to actually help that walk itself off. That lever's a little bit in the way too. You can see if I had another bike here, it might be a little hard to get to. That's only my, kind of my other gripe with it, but I do like how easy it is to utilize. No pins that I have to worry about. And look, now I can open up my hatch. I can get in here, get my coolers, get my helmets. Anything I might need from the back of here without having to climb over the seats is always gonna be a great option. And as you can see too, I'm able to get two of my kind of tree trunk legs up in here. So definitely get in a lot of space to actually get in the back here and access any of the cargo we might need. So always love to see that accessibility really coming through. And again, very, very easy to utilize this system. 
to walk it up. We're just going to support our mass and walk it up like so. You're going to hear that loud click that makes we're makes sure we're nice and secure here. Not going to have any issues there at all. Extremely easy to use. On the back end here, let's go ahead and start taking this bike off. We need to mention this ratchet strap already. Pressing this lever, walking the strap up like so. Get that set to the side so we're not having any issues when we dismount. And that brings us to our last hold here. As you can see, this is going to be very quick and easy to take on and off at the trail, which I really like. Again, this lever, easy to pop. But let's make sure we have a good hand on our bike. We don't want this tilting into our vehicle or even ourselves causing any damage, especially if we start getting heavier and heavier bikes. So getting this raised up out of the way and then just a nice gentle push to the side, getting that arm out of our way and we can just walk it off very, very easily. And now we're ready to ride. And again, I like how much we can actually get up underneath that too, especially we get those 40 pound bikes up on there. It's not gonna be too crazy for us to, you know, get right here. You are kind of extending just a little bit but with only 40 pounds. I don't think we're gonna have too much issue at all. Again, we can go ahead and collapse those in, bringing our arm down as well, up in our position like so. Get that tucked away just to get it nicely put away. Now with any hitch mounted accessory, we are going to add a little bit of length to our vehicle. Now on the Outlander, we have a little bit of length already, but let's go ahead and start taking a look to see how much we are adding on. I think our arms are going to add just a little bit more length than you might see some of the other platforms. And right at 33 and three quarter inches, definitely going to be a little bit of length added to the back of the vehicle. So I don't think it's going to be anything too crazy. You know, when we are going down the road on the highway or anything, definitely not going to be too much of an encumbrance. However, maybe we want to pull it in the garage or maybe we are at the trailhead and we got the bikes off and now we need to go ahead and park it somewhere. We can actually get a lot more maneuverability utilizing that same lever that we use to use that tilt away feature. So we want to come here again, getting a good hold on our mast as well, pulling that lever like so, and simply walking it up into its put away feature. One thing I really like about this guy, a lot of times you start seeing a lot of play in this position for some of the other bike racks. However, with this guy, you can see doing a good job, making sure it's nice and condensed. And what's great about that too, to get this level of securance, usually you have a lot of pin and clips to worry about. This one you don't. We just have that lever that's extremely easy to use. And one cool thing I wanted to show you guys about this as well. One thing I like a lot, maybe we do have that put in a in position and all we have to do when we're done with our trail, walk up. I don't have to set my bike down anywhere if you're like us and you don't have a bike stand extremely easy to walk up one-handed drop down our mast get those arms set up and then walk our bike in so as you can see i only need really one hand to get this whole system ready to put our bikes up so i really like that ease of use you know especially if we're just going for our nice casual rides on the saturday and we want to get going or get back after a quick ride it can be a great little subset for us well let's go ahead and see how much length we shave down in this position Looks like our anti rattle knob is going to be our largest position now on here. And right underneath 16 inches, so probably 15 and 15 sixteenths, definitely shaving down about half of that length for us. So extremely easy to use too. Now we can go ahead, get this in the garage. We're not having to pull off the carrier every time, or maybe we're at the trailhead and we just got a little bit more maneuverability, gonna give us a lot more access to our parking places. Taking a look at the inside too, looks like our arms are gonna be the, lar the closest point of contact to our bumper here. Let me go ahead and go under here for you guys. And right at four and a half inches, I definitely think we're gonna have more than enough clearance not to be worried about the back of our vehicle. These guys have a really good natural resistance too. You can see not gonna be fudging that much, especially if this carrier is moving a little bit. You can see very secure. And talking about securance, there's a reason for that as well. On the bottom here, we do have an anti-rattle threaded hitch. I'm sorry, not threaded hitch bolt, just the anti-rattle knob on the end here. And what this does a great job, there's actually an internal cam here that is getting pushed up against our hitch. So it's gonna be doing a good job making sure we're not gonna have any play in our rack. If I give you guys a quick look here, you can see as they shake this whole thing, it's actually shaking the entire vehicle. So we know that we're getting in line with one system. That means we're taking a lot of the play out as we get on the road, as you saw. So our bikes are gonna feel less, our bike racks are gonna feel less, and so are we as we are up there driving. So makes for a nice smooth ride. And another thing on the very end here, you can see that there is an Allen wrench attachment point here. So what's going to be great about that guy, if we have a lot of long road trips and we don't want to be checking this all the time, it can be really good to go ahead and give that one more tighten down just to make sure that we are nice and secure. However, if we're just out casually on the weekends or so, 
We just have to stand up and tighten it like this. That way we're not getting our hands and our knees nearly as much. Now, another important dimension to keep in mind is our clearance to the ground. So let's go ahead and when we have it in our put away, look at our clearance factor. It goes right to the end here. And at 12 inches, definitely not gonna be too much of a hindrance to us, but as those front wheels go down, the back will, or I'm sorry, as the front wheels go up, the back will go down. So it's important to keep that in mind. And let's go ahead and get our platform it's clearance here. If we were to move our bikes and we're on the off-road, we're going up a steep hill and right above 20 inches, so about 20 and a 16th. I don't think we're going to have any issues at all with our platform. If we're going to make any contact anywhere, I believe it would probably be down on here. But keep in mind, we are extending a little bit past our wheels, so we are going to get a little bit more play there. However, I definitely don't think we're going to have too many issues. But Again, if you're doing any kind of crazy off-roading, it might be something just to keep in mind. Moving our way down the shank here, you see we do have a two-inch receiver here. And today we've gone ahead and thrown on the e-trailer hitch pin alignment collar. Now this doesn't come on naturally here. You would have to pick it up as a side product. However, it definitely makes our ease of life that much better. All we have to do now is once we have this set the first time, we find our hitch pin hole, we just go ahead and throw that collar on there. That means next time I take this carrier off, when I go ahead and put it back on, it's gonna line up this pin perfectly. That means a lot less time on my hands and my knees. I'm not, you know, fidgeting around this hole, trying to find it, potentially pinching my fingers. All I have to do, walk it right up, slide this pin in, and we're ready to go. Talking about the pin, you can see, we just have a simple pin here to actually get us aligned, but we also have a great way of actually securing our rack to our vehicle with Kuat's locking core here. Now, as we mentioned before, we do have that integrated cable, co cable locking core on the front of our platform as well. And what's gonna be great, these are gonna be keyed alike. So, not gonna have too much issue of wondering which key goes to where. We can go ahead and just have one and a couple spares to boot. So, great little aspect there. Well, again, if you're looking for a way of getting those lightweight bikes up to the trail with you, I think this is gonna be a great option. I really like how this lever works. There's a lot less pins and clips to worry about. I can just walk it up, and I really like how I can just have that bike with me, push right here with my foot, and I'm already ready to get that bike loaded up. Makes that hassle after the ride that much better when we're out of breath and we just wanna start getting home. Way easy to just walk up and get it mounted. Kuat also looks extremely nice. You can't really beat the look of them as well. And I really like this anti-rattle knob. Being right on the end, it pays way more to not have to get on my hands and my knees, having to worry about it, getting in the mud, especially up at the trailhead. Well, I think that about does it for our look at the Kuat Sherpa 2.0 on our 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. I'm Bobby, thank you for watching. This is our test course. Let's start with the slalom. This shows side-to-side -side action, such as turning corners or evasive maneuvering. Then on to our alternating speed bumps. This shows twisting action, such as hitting curbs, potholes, road debris, or uneven pavement. And last of all, the solid speed bumps. This shows up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot or parking garage, or driving in and out of a driveway.